Hi everyone, this video is going to demonstrate HVE positioning that corresponds with the rinsing skill. The rinsing skill includes limited rinses and comprehensive rinses or complete rinses that happen at the end of the procedure. But before we can do that, we have to understand HVE positioning. So I've already posted videos in the course on positioning your HVE. But what we have to think about is how are we going to hold this device? First thing is, if we're working for a right-handed operator, the assistant sits on the left side of the patient. We hold our HVE with our right hand. That allows our left hand to be free for passing instruments or for doing other tasks. Two choices to hold this device. You can hold it in a pen grasp, which means similar to how you would hold a pen or a pencil, and your thumb or index finger should be near the switch to turn the device on and off. So pen grasp is a good grasp to reach different areas of the mouth. The second grasp is a thumb to nose grasp, which gives you a stronger hold of the device. So for a thumb to nose grasp, Hold the device with the tip pointed down and put the whole device in your hand so that your thumb is positioned near the switch. So when you're using the thumb to nose grasp, you're able to hold the device and turn it on and off with your thumb. This gives you a lot more strength in holding the HVE so that you can use the HVE to retract the cheek or the tongue it puts less strain on your fingers and hand versus the pen grasp when it comes to retraction. So you're going to use one of those two grips. The other thing to think about is the bevel of the HVE tip. So at the opening, we have a bevel. This bevel must be placed against hard tissue. So it has to be placed against a tooth or the alveolar ridge. Don't place it against the tongue, the cheek, or the lip because it will suction it right up. Just like a vacuum cleaner sucking up drapes. It's going to go right into that opening and you could cause an injury to the patient's soft tissue. With a closer view of the patient, some things to think about in your HVE tip placement. The opening goes against a hard surface, tooth or alveolar ridge. We want to be near where the doctor is working, but not in the doctor's way. We don't want to bump the doctor because that could cause the hand piece or whatever instrument they're using to slip and injure the patient. And we also need to be where the water and debris is ending up. So gravity is going to pull all the debris and water to the back of the patient's throat. So we need to be posterior to where the doctor is working to pick up the most debris and water. As a dental assistant, we're always using both hands. We never have a free hand. So with suctioning, I like to use a finger on my left hand, index finger, to retract. If you prefer, you could use the air water syringe to retract. So if you hold the air water syringe in your left hand, you can retract soft tissue with the air water syringe and then use the air water syringe as a guide to slip your HVE into the mouth. Or index finger, use your index finger to guide the HVE into the mouth. Calling out a tooth number here, if the doctor is working on tooth number 20, think about the surface. It's not just the tooth, it's the surface. Lingual, occlusal, buccal. We are going to be on the side of the tooth that's closest to us. If they're working on 20, we want to be at least a tooth behind to pick up all the debris that's flowing back to the back of the throat. If the doctor is working on lingual, 
we still stay on the buccal side. We want to stay on the side of the tooth that's closest to us. But if they're working on lingual, that frees up the buccal side and we could be closer to the tooth that's being worked on. For maxillary, same rule applies. Retract. Use your finger or air water syringe to retract and then use that as a guide to slip your HVE into position. If the doctor is working on tooth number 14, I'm going to slip my HVE bevel facing the teeth and I'm going to be posterior to tooth number 14. So I want to be on 15 or if they have a wisdom tooth, I can be on 16. Again, I stay on the buccal surface because that's the side that's closest to me. For the right side of the patient's mouth, the side of the mouth that is closest to me is the lingual side now. So I can slip my suction into the mouth, keeping the bevel facing the teeth, and I'm going to place my bevel one tooth behind where the doctor is working. So if they're working on five, I would be on four. If they're on four, I'm on three. And the same thing holds true with mandibular teeth. Mandibular right teeth, you want to retract the tongue, usually with a mirror or your air water syringe. Use that as a guide to slip your HVE into position and then place the bevel of your HVE next to a tooth and make sure that tooth is posterior to where the doctor is working. We have two choices for anterior positioning. It depends on if the doctor is working on lingual or facial. If they're working on facial, we usually position lingual, opposite of where the doctor is working. If they're on 24 facial, I can position on 24 lingual. If I'm not picking up a lot of spray in this position, I can always change the position of my HVE to facial. As long as I'm not on that tooth, I would move closer to me so the doctor can still work on the facial surface, but I might pick up more spray or spatter in this position. So lingual, if the doctor's working on facial, if that's not picking up enough, you could switch to the facial position. And of course, if they're working on lingual, we would be on facial. And the same is true for maxillary teeth. If the doctor is working on the lingual surface, I would retract and I can suction on the facial. If they're working on facial, I can go under the tooth they're working on and suction from the lingual surface. One thing to keep in mind is always be aware of your HVE positioning. Don't pinch their lip or cheek between your suction and their teeth that could cause an injury, a bruise. And a lot of times the patient may be numb where we are working, so they won't feel it until that numbing agent wears off. So use a retraction technique, either with your air water syringe or with your finger to prevent pinching their soft tissue with your HVE. So with those positioning pointers out of the way, we can then move on to the rinsing techniques. With rinsing, we have two types, limited rinse, which happens frequently throughout a procedure, or a comprehensive rinse, which happens at the end of a procedure. With limited rinsing, what we do whenever the doctor exits the mouth, we give the tooth a powerful spray of water, dry it, and then we can dip down into the back of the mouth to suction any moisture, any debris at the back of the mouth. So I'm going to demonstrate on 
Well, let's do a mandibular incisor. It's pretty easy to see. If the doctor is working on tooth number 24, facial, I'm going to turn my suction on before it goes into the mouth. Assistants place their suction before the doctor starts working. So I place my suction. When the doctor stops working, if they're on the facial of 24, I give it a powerful spritz of air-water combination. I'm pressing both buttons. I switch over to air, keeping the HVE in position to pick up that moisture. And then I can dip down into the back of the patient's mouth to suction any water that ended up in the back of their mouth. Very important when you're doing your spray to hit both buttons at the same time. That'll give you a very powerful spray. So hitting both buttons, you get a very powerful spray. If you only hit the water, it's a pretty weak water stream. But by hitting both, you get a really good blast to spray the tooth off. This limited rinse is supposed to clear the area where the doctor is working. Clear it, dry it, so they can inspect it and check their progress. If the doctor is working on tooth number 12, let's say they are working on 12 occlusal. I'll position on 13 to suction up as much moisture and debris as possible. When the doctor exits the mouth, I go in with my air water syringe. It's okay to touch the tooth, blast it with your air water combination, switch over to just air to dry it, and then I can dip down to the back of the patient's mouth to pick up the excess moisture. When you dip to the back of the patient's mouth to pick up that extra moisture, make sure your bevel is against a hard surface. You can go on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth or the buccal surface of the side closest to you. If you notice accumulation on the right side, sometimes the patient will be tilted away from you. You would again go either on the occlusal surface of those posterior teeth or lingual surface, the side that's closest to you. So very important responsibility for the assistant is to provide those limited rinses throughout the procedure. The last procedure that we do before the patient exits the chair is we provide a comprehensive rinse to freshen up their mouth after a procedure where they may have a lot of debris, saliva, uh, filling fragments left behind. So I've placed some debris in the patient's mouth. Obviously this occurs naturally throughout a restorative procedure, but to simulate it on a mannequin I had to place a little bit of debris in here. This usually happens after the doctor has left the operatory, so we can position the patient how it works best for us. So we're going to have the patient turn towards us and we're going to have them tilt their chin down, which this mannequin, he's already tilted down. I'm just going to lock him into position so he doesn't move around too much on me. Usually debris is concentrated where the work occurred. I kind of spread it all over for demonstration purposes. We're going to turn on the suction and place it on the side closest to us on the mandible. So I'm going to turn on my suction and once that's on, I'm going to spray my powerful spray of water, hitting both buttons at the same time around the mouth, starting at the high point. So upper right, lower right, and gravity will cause that water mixed in with the debris to flow to my suction.
And sometimes you slip a little bit and give the patient a shower. Notice my suction does not move at all. I'm only moving the air water syringe. When you think you have all the debris removed from the patient's mouth, then we can inspect with the mouth mirror to make sure we have captured everything. A little debris left behind on the lips can be wiped up with a gauze or a cotton roll. You gave them a bit of a shower, give them a courtesy wipe to remove that moisture and then inspect. Of course, I would use the overhead light so I could see better, but for video purposes, it really um, lowers the quality of the, the video picture. So a little bit there on the buckle on that second premolar. Check under the tongue, so retract, push the tongue away, look at the linguals and check the vestibules check the maxillary vestibule looks like there's some up there that was missed and check the mandibular vestibules some down there that was missed so I could continue with my rinse if I find debris in some areas or if I see just one spot of debris I could go in and wipe it with a piece of gauze. So if you see some, don't be afraid to go back in. For your skill, you have to remove all the debris. If you don't, you'll get a point off. Once your patient is free of debris, you're ready to release them. You can always give them a courtesy cup of mouthwash to do a final rinse before they leave. A lot of patients like that courtesy mouth rinse at the end. You know, give them a cup of mouthwash so they can rinse and expectorate and remove the debris themselves. And saliva ejector is helpful at the end to pick up any liquids in the back of the patient's mouth. So those are your two types of rinses. Limited, frequently done throughout a procedure, and then a comprehensive rinse at the end of a procedure to remove the debris and freshen the, the patient's mouth. Thank you for watching.